I mean, yeah, I, I like I like anything that I feel like is useful in mm-hmm. everyday yes, life. Of course. And like things that can be useful to just like in your relationship with yourself and just like to be at a higher vibration for people that are not like that weren't born into the spirituality. Like to me, it's like I love I really love all these concepts. Like you always talk about, like I saw your channel, like you talk about these really big, like these out there things like astral species and like you know extraterrestrials and like the galactic federation Mm -hmm. and all that and i completely love that (laughs) but what my main focus is right now is just like the human experience and like it's very like i'm very focused on my earth Mm -hmm. like my earth journey yeah i'm really out there you're really in the in the now the physical yeah yeah i'm still I, i feel like i'm going to get to the point where i'm like I'm naturally going to be more drawn to astral projection and like all these abilities and all these. I do have like a Claire. Sometimes I have Claire audience and uh, just like Claire cognizance. Okay, that's. Interesting. I have some crazy stories with that, but I feel like I'm going to be able to focus more on that once I kind of just like figure mm-hmm. out more of my human things. Yes, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. Oh, no, nothing. I was just gonna say like. <clears throat> This doesn't like have to be in the video. Like this can just be a little warm up. You know, actually, you can put whatever you want to put. <laughs> yes, no, I was I was thinking of putting this in because it's it was a really good great explanation of why you think it's important. So oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, I mean, whatever you think is important, it's mm-hmm. it's important. So <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you gave a good explanation on why why you think it's important to um, focus on yourself and on the earthly. Um, body instead of the more out there astral and galactic federation stuff like that which it is true i mean you're living in this body right now so it's more important to know and take care of this body than it is to go to the astral or stuff like that i get that yeah yeah and also some people's mission is to like for example there is king cassius and like a lot of people on this server and like a lot of people that are uh more into like these uh very highly like spiritual concepts i don't even know what to call it because like everything is spiritual Mm -hmm. like what i talk about what i'm into that's spiritual too it's kind of weird but like you know those concepts that are more like extraterrestrial you know okay so esoteric extraterrestrial yeah 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 Yeah, exactly that's the word esoteric so yeah it's like there are people whose earth mission or like their current mission right now has to do something with with that and that that's also important but uh I also think there are a lot of people whose mission is like a little bit more like like casual like that like you know like a lot more like like uh, I really want to be like an astral warrior one day but hmm. it's you, just not you probably like are already my current oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> I mean I believe you are already you're just not conscious of it yet yeah I mean also like transforming energy that's also a form of warriorship I don't know that much about angelic schools i've heard that i've Mm -hmm. went to the angelic schools on andromeda in a past life and like what i know about it is that like uh what they teach you is like to how how to transform the dark into light Mm -hmm. or something like that i don't know but you know that is it is it what they do like yes yes that's that's exactly what they do they oh thank you angelic yeah no it's exactly they they do they teach on how to indeed um alchemize the negative energy to positive energies in beings and stuff like that also healing in in just like i mean everything bad is negative energy if you're hurt or physically or mentally hurt um it is all negative energy it all comes from negative energy and so they teach you on how to alchemize it to positive energy of light and love yeah exactly and i mean that is very present on earth like you don't have to go you don't have to go so far to Mm -hmm. to go through that like those are very real battles even though they're more fought within a like a more um internal like they're they're more fought internally rather than literally like like going at it with a sword or like (laughs) you know with (laughs) like i mean they go out with a sword too but (laughs) <laughs> yeah, of course. Just like in a more like I don't know, like most people that I know, they've never been to like a sword fight. <laughs> but they have but they have been like you know what I'm saying. It's like yes, all yes. these I feel like this energy like this transformation of energy, it's 
everywhere. Like, like uh, not to describe, I love a good sword fight, not saying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that energy is like, like that whole thing of what you do with what you receive. It's like, you know how they say how like 10% of life is what happens to you and 90% is what you do with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, That's kind of about this whole concept. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's really and like true. part of yeah, uh, go ahead. No, I was just saying that you were right. <laughs> that's all. That's all. I was just saying uh, you you're right exactly. That's one hundred percent right what you're saying. But what what did you want to say? Uh, I was just gonna say how like these things do show in the astral realm, like how the way you handle maybe being emotionally abused by a narcissist. Like I'm. I'm just saying, like, this might be a bit, like, triggering for some people, so mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I do that. But, like, maybe let's say you just get, like, somebody just triggers you or, like, tells you something to harm you. Like, literally not even just, like, accidentally you get triggered, but, like, somebody just, mm -hmm. somebody Purpose. wants to feel su yeah. superior and literally hurts you to, to feel superior. And, like, the way you handle that internally or maybe even externally it shows in your energy and like astrally it's a very like concrete thing like it's not just like like that that's why i think the way you feel is so important and the way you handle your emotions is so important and like the way you care about yourself is so important because it all shows in the astral and it's not just something like oh you feel that way oh that's nothing like it's not nothing it actually like in a certain like on a level of reality it's like it's like the physical so yeah, that, that's just what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's true. The astral is really close to the physical. I mean, everything that happens to you physically has an impact on you astrally. Everything that happens to you astrally or mentally has an impact on you physically. So they're really connected with each other. So you're really right in that. Yeah, yeah. So do you have any, like, questions you want to ask me? Um, I have a few, yes. So. Oh, I'd yeah. love to hear them. <laughs> so what what let me ask you when was your um awakening if you can remember that oh i mean i feel like i go through an awakening like every two months <laughs> <laughs> yeah but when was like really the first time you started realizing um all these things mm. actually i it was when i was around 14 uh or maybe th like 13 14 mm -hmm. closer to 14 okay because that was when covid was like it was mm -hmm. before covid yes and you know how in the quarantine and like in 2020 there was a lot of spirituality just like all over the place blowing up and i kind of j jumped on that wave of like discovering a, a lot about astrology i started with astrology actually because okay. healing always interested me like ever since mm -hmm. i was a baby okay not a baby but <laughs> it's like i was always really yeah it was it's interesting like there's a baby there and it's just reading about psychology but <laughs> sort of i mean I'm, from a very young age mm -hmm. i always uh was really interested in psychology and just like wanting to improve my life or just like wanting to wanting to feel better literally mm -hmm. but not like in a not like in a temporary way but like to raise my vibration but i didn't know what that was like i didn't know that it was raising your vibration i was just like ooh, like even when i was little i was like searching up videos of like ooh, how to i don't know like i don't remember it exactly but i i it's just always interested me just like how to be a better person that grew itself into you know me being really interested in spirituality and then when 2020 came around i was also going through some realizations about the friends that i had and how they were toxic and like how mm -hmm. uh i actually needed some time alone and like away from them and i i, I did that i cut off, i cut off a lot of people but i was also switching schools so i was also talking to new people so it wasn't like that uncertainty of oh my god where am i gonna have new friends because i was also i had that like i had the stability of uh like meeting new people but yeah, I did distance myself from a lot of people and that left me with a lot of time to just reflect on myself and like reflect on things that I was dealing with and like what I really wanted to do in life. That's when I decided I want to be a musician because uh, I wanted to be an actor before that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I always had ideas about music, but music was also a thing. Like I listened to a lot of uh, musicians just talk about their lives and how they, like their healing journeys, you know, in a more non-spiritual manner. And that just made me realize like, I want to do that. Like I want to help people heal. I want to bring people that comfort and that like knowing that they're not alone and like everybody goes through things and like I feel like that's why music is so helpful is that it's like music is all about feeling you know you hear a tune it's like a major chord it's it's more happy then you hear a minor chord it's more sad Mm -hmm. like and like nobody can explain it like why I do certain sounds just like sound kind of sad and other mm-hmm. sound kind of happy well, and like you hear a song it, and yeah. yeah like you hear a song and there are no words like it's it's a soundtrack and then you feel so empowered mm-hmm. and like you just get this vision of like leading this uh, I don't know it's, it's just so fun and <laughs> and like uh, for me that was why I kind of wanted to become a musician was I mean of course I was really lucky like I ever since I was a baby literally I was like the singer kid like in my family I was like the talented one in music and everybody mm-hmm. pushed me to do music but I was always like ah okay okay <laughs> yeah I know if people push but you then, you some yeah. reason I don't like so, yeah. if people push me in, the, in an area you basically answered my question because when you talked about how you as a kid were into um so, uh Damn it, what's the English word? Psych- just like self-improvement, basically. But not yeah. like the today's, what people think self-improvement is. And there's like Andrew Tate and all those weird <laughs> places. You know, it's just like no. the word self-improvement. Literally just the word, nothing attached to it. I was mm-hmm. always interested okay. in that. Yeah. But cause... also, I just, I just said the music one, because that's just so like... Mm-hmm. This is just so connected to like my my awakening when I realized that that was what I wanted to do for a living. Yeah, because I wanted to ask like like if you were interested in psychology as a kid, why did you go for music? But you basically answered that question already. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. I just I just want to make <laughs> I know I was I was going off a uh, I was going with my phone one second. Phone is so old. It's from like two thousand and. 15 or something <laughs> uh, what i just wanted to say like so it's okay if you cut like some things out yeah like, no yeah, of course of course not at all like really so what i just wanted to say i feel like the way music can really speak to your emotions and really talk to you in ways that your emotion like really talk to you in ways that words can't and like i feel like that brings people together so good because my theory is that we all go through the same emotional states and like the same sort of vibrational states in our lives, mm-hmm. just through different contexts. For sure. Like everybody has felt, everybody has felt stuck. Everybody has felt powerless. Everybody has felt love. Everybody has mm-hmm. felt powerful. And like every, it's like, and it's like music can really channel that part of you and really connect people without the awkward. Oh, so how do you feel? And you try to explain and you low key feel that they don't really get it. And it's like kind of weird. <laughs> so yeah, that that's all really um, any more questions. Yes, I'm reading because you you have answered a lot of them. I just talking. I didn't even have to ask them. So it was really great, of course. So I'm just seeing. Um, so how do you see because you talked about universal plan how do you look at that exactly oh okay so to me the universal plan is like that some people say that's either i don't know if that's 5d completely i've heard that that's like a part of the 5d consciousness but it's like Mm -hmm. basically knowing that everything that happens happens for the best and i know that a lot of these things like the wars going on and all that and people are like how could that happen for the best and i don't Mm -hmm. think you know it's like i feel like people you know the way like i i think things happen against those things like we don't see the outcome yet but some things are going to change and the things that we say like oh how could that happen for the best other things happen for the best and make that go away we learn so much from it that it never comes back that's how i think like it ties in with following your intuition and like being tapped into your emotional body and like your soul literally and like this whole universal consciousness because you're like okay whatever you feel drawn to it's for a reason and like it is that is also a part of the universal plan so there's no need to worry 
because a lot of the times, you know, people are always like, but what if this happens? But what if that happens? And, you know, it's just like very fear based thinking. Mm -hmm. But like knowing that there is a universal plan, and like you are a part of this collective consciousness and like you are not you're connected and like it aligns you to this belief of oneness makes fear very hard to follow because it's like the matrix or like i don't know if people call that the matrix but like the mm -hmm. very most of them like do. this very standard consciousness and like this very standard way of thinking that we have been programmed to follow is the fear-based thinking yes. of like go Low to college vibration. because yeah, exactly. So like, go to college because you're terrified of what if you don't go to college. <laughs> yeah. Be it's like literally we are taught to create this whole fake personality if you think about it and like mm -hmm. hide the yes. hide so many parts of us For just sure. because what if? What if? <laughs> but like to know that there is literally no what ifs. Like there is a universal plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying the future is set in stone. No, but, of course not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, there is just things are working out in our favor, and also the universal plan also talks about how there is no me versus the other, and that goes so deep. Like, I feel like I'm having a hard time explaining this, but you're it's doing like, great. <laughs> you're oh, doing great you. explaining it. No, you're really doing great. So basically, it's like the benefit of the individual benefits the community, and it's like if you feel good that benefits the whole because we are all one and that is also uh something that goes against our standard way of thinking it's like you versus the other it's like selfishness it's like if i feel good then that needs to be at the expense of other people and mm -hmm. i see that a lot with today it's like there are all these videos about oh you need to be selfish and you need to be all that but it's like what they really talk about is not selfishness but what they really talk about is it's like being your best self and like improving yourself is going to help other people and it's no way like selfish actually like it's like nothing like you being happy is never at the expense of others and if they say that it is then they're self-destructive like they're literally yeah, for sure. like yeah they are literally not serving themselves or mm -hmm. the like or, or like like or the oneness like or the community yeah they're probably also just driven so, yeah, by that, that jealousy uh excuse me i didn't really hear <laughs> no problem you that said. you um that they probably act out of jealousy because they just can't stand to see that person happy because they themselves are not happy you know for whatever reason which most of the time yeah, is exactly. their own is their own fault but they want to take that person's happiness away to feel good themselves yeah exactly and it's like it's like but at the end of the day even if they do take it they don't really take it like mm, yeah. you cannot take somebody's happiness these two comes from within and mm -hmm. a lot of people think that they're miserable because of somebody else and like i do understand that like you can't blame yourself but you still need to take responsibility for yourself because I was just thinking about this today. Basically, blaming yourself, it breathes shame. That's a very low vibrational low vibration, energy. Yeah. And it's literally also not true. Like, truth is always... Like, the truth always feels good. Like, of course, there's always, like, the harsh truth and all that. <laughs> but the yeah. harsh harsh truth only feels bad. Like, it's only harsh. Because you realize you've been lied to. Mm -hmm. But the That's truth true. itself is never, like... It's always empowering. Yeah, it is. It's also like what I've said about blaming yourself. It's like, especially when you're dealing with toxic patterns and like being toxic to yourself and maybe even to other people, a lot of people blame themselves and they're like, oh, why am I not full of love? Why am I so full of darkness? Why am I this? Why am I that? And even though they really are being toxic, it's really important to acknowledge that our environment shapes us from when we are a child mm -hmm. and literally the way you feel and what you think and everything you do, it makes perfect sense and is a completely logical result of everything you've ever been through and yes. everything you've ever seen. It's all trauma. And yeah, exactly. And if, if you're able to forgive yourself, yes. then it's going to be much easier to forgive others. Mm -hmm. Because if you realize like people that hurt other people, they literally don't know better. They're hurting themselves through yes. that. Like they're if you hurt somebody else, 
it's like scientifically proven that you're literally hurting yourself too mm -hmm. yeah and like yeah exactly uh, say, say something if you want to <laughs> no, yeah i was trying to say that indeed um the most important thing in spiritual growth or shadow work or however you want to call it even um for when you're about to die let's say stuff like those things the most important thing is to be able to forgive yourself to feel fully forgive yeah. yourself once you do that um then you're really cleared of all negativity also the moment you are able to forgive yourself you clear out all the negative energy that's in you yeah yeah i also feel like i'm talking like so much <laughs> like yeah, no but no it's okay no. i'm i'm uh, i mean it's it's really interesting everything you're telling so i'm just i'm just really listening fascinated by what you're saying thank because you i mean how old, how old are you again 17 i'm 17 yes yeah. you see yeah okay. how, how old are you i'm 22 23 sorry <laughs> sorry 23 uh, but, time but... is moving so fast yeah <laughs> but you know because i had my awakening oh, bleh, again i had my awakening <laughs> at six but you say around the wow. age of 13 14 so for you that's really a short uh span of time for you to have learned so much so i'm really impressed by that i mean not everything i feel i mean but yeah <laughs> i was just thought about it i mean most of the things i've learned i have learned from the age of 14 mm -hmm. but i was i just like i said i was always open yes to it, yes of so. course i know but you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. thank thank you though like you can tell me more about your awakening too <laughs> my awakening oh mine, yeah or mine, like... mine was quite rough <laughs> it's really oh. yeah no um especially for a six-year-old kid like uh, of course I mean, it was really in in the face like i don't know have you heard the story before have i told you before or not? i have but like i don't know it's just like there are always realizations mm -hmm. about things that come up so if you have like something that ties into your awakening and is relevant to you right now you can share that but it's also okay if there's not um you know my awakening was just like i was being attacked by by negative beings so but it also made me realize that they can't do that much to me you know they physically they can't really hurt me so that's that's why i learned out it's also how to you say is how to deal with fear also you know i've, I've almost no fears because of that wow. event yeah oh. okay i have fear of heights like the only thing i'm really fear afraid yeah. of is heights even yeah. though if i could have any superpower i would love to fly i still have fear of heights <laughs> so that's really but <laughs> yeah for this i don't really have any fears now which i learned from that experience also because well i mean yeah uh go ahead no no say uh fear is like literally like the root of mm -hmm. everything like yes i feel like Fear is, I think fear is the ego, sort of. Like, it's different when you have adrenaline. Yes, fear or like is adrenaline, ego. Adrenaline, I don't know. But, like, it's different when you have that thing of you feel very excited, but you also have fear, like, some sort of, some sort of fear, anxiety. But it's, like, there is something at, like, there is something great on the line. And it's not just, like, for no reason. Like, you're not being afraid of, oh, no, I'm gonna look stupid but like <laughs> and then you're sitting in your room and you're just like being like oh my god but you're actually going out and following your heart and you still feel fear mm -hmm. but you don't let it like guide your decisions yes exactly that's what i mean that's what i mean yeah i mean that's too. this really i mean you can tell me more about like how you perceive i just know that it's not my own um energy no you if how do you um also with uh, the breath, breath techniques, um, with that you, the fear, how is it? Breath work. Fear, yeah, yeah, like fear and, and stress is kind of the same thing, it's attached to each other. With my, my breath work, I can release the stress with it also releasing the fear, if you understand. So it doesn't, um, yeah, yeah. so it doesn't um impact my decisions i mean i don't really have that much emotional control over my fear i mean i do <laughs> feel it it's yes, like of course i just like fight it or like go against mm -hmm. it like a lot of the times i feel like the greatest thing that helped me to learn was to 
just get out of my comfort zone and i'm not yes. just saying like oh say hi to people on the street <laughs> but like really like really fighting your worst fears mm -hmm. and i don't mean yes, if your worst fear is like something reasonable like i don't know death like don't die <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> but of course yeah. but when your fear is you know that your fear is not actually mm -hmm. dangerous and of course you're ego is going to be like oh but it is dangerous because what if this but what if that yeah. but like if you in your heart you know that your fear it will not kill you it will not hurt you if you're able to fight it and like go against it that's going to teach you so much and like release mm -hmm. it is. so much it is really and, like even yeah yeah and, like even even now this is kind of a scary thing for me because uh it's just like oh my god like i've never done this before you mean like, this uh, this uh this interview kind of thing yeah yes. i've never like i've i've done videos on my own of course mm -hmm. you, you know yeah it's, it's different well, because it it, you're just talking to yourself basically and now you're talking to to another person so yeah, i understand yeah. it but how um what kind of fear do it just um how do you say it like because it's it's new or or are you because i wouldn't think that for you especially for the things you upload to the channel it's not that you um, are scared of what I would think about you or something like that. Just because no, it's, it's, it's just new, right? Yeah, I mean, not really, but there's still that <laughs> discomfort. Like, it's not that uh, it's not necessarily fear, but it's more just like mm -hmm. it's yeah. not that comfortable because it's new. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, you're going to like like being on YouTube was such a like a like I don't want to say uncomfortable in a bad way because you do need to get out of your comfort mm -hmm. zone for sure but the reason i went like private on youtube is that i was going through some things and with that i just didn't feel comfortable with having my face on the internet or mm -hmm. not even just my yes. face but like my vulnerability and my truth and mm -hmm. also like i am going to go back to youtube definitely i also feel like i have a purpose with it but right now i, f I feel like it's it it is also important to give yourself some time because just like i've said first of all don't beat yourself up for having fear because everybody programmed it into you when you were a child and like the world it's like fear is everywhere like it's pouring it's even uh in hungary we have a saying if something is so everywhere we says it's even pouring out of the tap <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that like it's all that fear-based thinking and like that ego-based thinking is everywhere so it's like it's going to take time for you to really break out of it mm -hmm. and to really fight your fears one by one. And you just really just cannot accept, like expect yourself to, to do it all at once. And for me, that was what, that was, that was uh, what was going on with my YouTube is that I just felt like I want to do this later. And like, now I want to just deal with the things that I'm dealing with, just like in my personal life and like go back to YouTube later when I have more clarity mm -hmm. yes. on what I want to do it's on really there. Important too. Yeah. And like for myself to not beat myself up, but to <laughs> be like, you are getting to do what you're, you want to do. You are, yes, you are getting to you will do, do the scary thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is going to be, it's still going to be a bit uncomfortable, but like, at first, you just need to get through what you're dealing with right now. And then you're going to get to go back. You know, that's the thing, like a lot of people preach, like, do it all now, manifest everything today, <laughs> like, manifest, <Yeah. laughs> literally, like, say, manifest your dream life in three days. And I do <laughs> think it is possible. Yes, like, if you're skilled not, it, but... Yeah, like, exactly, like, it's not impossible, but it's unreasonable to, it's like, be angry at yourself for not being able to do that because you have a long path to walk like everyone for some people even if you did manifest your dream life you would still have a long way to go from it there like the path never ends yeah like it's important to give yourself time and to give yourself grace when you really need to do that mm -hmm. yes that's really important but so um what you you were into um or you were studying um music and um alternative rock Right? Is this right? Alternate for rock? I yeah, think. Uh, I'm not. I'm not studying. I'm working on a project. Okay, 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 right okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm just in school. Like I'm in normal school. I mean, I'm in. I'm in like an acting school, but it's basically like you have normal school. Like you have the normal high school mm -hmm, lessons, yeah. and on top of that, you have the acting. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, that's okay, like okay. that takes up. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm I'm doing that right now. Okay. So what are you planning to do with it? Like with the uh, music and stuff. Oh, if with you, my music. If, yeah, if you want to share that okay. already, of course. Okay. I don't want to give too much away. Mm -hmm. But Secret. the point is that I just really want to be authentic with my art. Just to really bring this kind of energy and this whole vibe into <clears throat> into like the music industry but not really like into like the world that i haven't seen being done yet or like it's not that even if it was has been done it's just i just want to bring more of my authenticity mm -hmm. because i feel like there's just so much non-authenticity in the world right now yes. like there's just so <laughs> much <laughs> everywhere literally it's like everywhere same thing it's even pouring out of the tap social media everywhere it's like everybody's trying to it like this image and even with my like everything that i'm working on right now that i don't want to share because i don't want to give too much away i like to keep it like a little mysterious and then surprise people <laughs> but still like my main focus is just authenticity really mm -hmm. because first of all authenticity it's good for me, but what I found is that the most people could help me was when they were authentic, even though it was a bit risky. Like, even though they said, might have said something controversial or might have said something that might offend me, but <laughs> obviously it didn't. Yes. And that was when they could most help me. And I realized that that was the most, that was when I was the most helpful to my friends too, or to people in my life, when I shared something that I felt a bit risky to share. Mm -hmm. you're just really truthful uh ex excuse me what <laughs> sorry <laughs> when you were <laughs> really truthful oh yeah yeah i want to be i want to be truthful and but i'm still giving myself the time to like finish school mm -hmm. yes because that's good yeah it's like even though i wasn't planning on finishing high school uh i was actually planning on dropping out but mm -hmm. it's important to i feel like it's important to really look at your situation and even though for me it's like i do not like the school system i don't yes, agree with no, it I, yeah it's the same thing for me total... goes. it's really since i'm working like every last you you really do not have that much that much spare time than when you're in school or you know time for yourself so that's why that's why i told you when you asked you to drop out of school i told you do not do it because now you're still at school you still have a lot more time for yourself than when you go to work so that's really yeah, important yeah. i mean for me yeah. there is for me <laughs> people are going to get angry but for me there is literally no other reason why you should go to school because they really don't teach you anything useful except for the things you want to learn of course but yeah only just because you have a lot more free time for yourself than when you are working which is really yeah. important i mean for me school is more like i go in there because and i like want to complete school because i just don't want the drama like i don't want to <laughs> deal with all the questions yes. of, why did you drop out why did you do this mm -hmm. and you could totally say it is people pleasing and maybe it is but even if it is i don't want to deal with the consequences of dropping out right now and like of being like okay what do i do mm -hmm. how do i make time for what i actually want to do and like doing my own things like art is a business always like if you're an artist you're also kind of a businessman because <laughs> it's like ain't like yeah if like you to do like my own business that way i do have help though like i do have some i i do have i feel like i do have a lot of great opportunities and i do have a lot of help that i have so i'm not just like doing it out of the blue like i do have a very great plan but still it's school is so much school just gives you that safety like you, really like school just gives you that safety of like being able to tell people that you're in school and then it's just like okay it's it's school like it's just it's like going along with like the standard plan it's of course it's it might not be the best thing but it's still safe in a way and especially when you're young and you're financially dependent on like your family mm -hmm. It's like, I think it's completely okay not want to deal with, like, the people that you live with being angry oh, at like, you oh or being God, anxious. I'm so worried. You know, going through all that because, first of all, you're living together. That energy is going to affect your energy. And even then, you can still say, like, oh, it's a challenge. Like, it's, a, it's like, okay, then I'll learn to protect my energy and all that. And, of course, you can do that. Like, you can. 
but simply I'm choosing the set of consequences that comes from staying in school than the consequences of leaving school. I don't think, like, of course, it's like the less independent one, but at the same time, I finish school and then I'm done and then I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Yes, I totally get that. I understand. Way, I was. Just, I, I had the same. Okay. Had the same thoughts also. Yes. I just watched the like a video recently about nine to five jobs. Mm -hmm. And if you want to tell me more about that, or just like your ideas around it, or like whatever it inspires you, like whatever <laughs> thought you have around it, we can talk about it because it actually interests me a lot. Mm -hmm. Nine to five jobs, like the work system, and like <laughs> I don't, I don't like it at all. Like the only, <laughs> I get it. Me neither. <laughs> no, but the only reason I do it, I mean, I should say it this way: the only reason I'm working what I'm working at right now is so that I have to communicate with people because I was really, I was really, really not that social. <laughs> so, like I um I always was really shy. Not not like scared, okay, but just I don't know. I, I, get I it. just I get it. wasn't interesting and in, interested in talking with people. <laughs> my strange I get it. sounds really strange, but yeah, but that's the only reason why I'm doing the job that I'm doing right now. Is I also so have to, that with school yeah, too. To force myself to talk with people, to force myself to be social, stuff like that. But yeah. other other than that, um I just see it as as what it is, and it is a slavery system of the elites. That's just, literally, that's just literally the only way I see it. <laughs> I did, I, I, I completely facts. Like I didn't know if I can say that, but like the videos <laughs> I watched, they were all titled like wage slavery and all mm -hmm. that. Like yeah, I don't care either. It, just I'm, I'm just gonna it say is. how it is. Exactly. Also, like about the not wanting to talk or like the being shy and all that like what you talked about i know you're technically not shy but like i don't i don't want to say like oh you're shy like you know <laughs> i don't want to be mean <laughs> but like i get it completely because i do also go to school to meet people because mm -hmm. i also feel like with the pandemic and with like our society being forced into having to do everything from home so many people got used to it and it's mm -hmm. like Yes. Now it's almost hard. Like I did this thing where I didn't go on my phone for a very long time and I still really don't use it that much. Like a lot of the times I look up like I'm not on my phone and everybody else is and it makes me feel yes. lonely even though I'm uh, not on, on my phone. It should make me feel more connected to be in the real world. But it's like everybody's in the digital world. And I feel like that is still something that needs to be acknowledged. Yes. How much. Yeah. Like how much connection like. It's a bit difficult nowadays, but of course I'm not saying like it's impossible. It's definitely not impossible. <laughs> yes. I also get how I feel like when you're a star seed or even like if you're just oh my god, this is gonna sound so edgy, but like when you're just different <laughs> <laughs> it's like sometimes it can feel like the way I could describe it is that everybody's life is a movie and it's like your movie is just different. Like your movie, it's a different style. It's shot in a different style because you focus on different things. It's like the camera focuses on different mm -hmm. things. It's like, it's like, it's like literally if sometimes I've, I've felt like a lot of, okay, let, let me gather my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, go ahead. For, for a lot of my life, I felt like I'm perceiving a different reality from people. And some of that is being neurodivergent because uh, I have ADHD. Yeah, I think but... most most of us star seeds have for sure. Yeah, or something <laughs> like maybe we're on the spectrum or like something like that. But it's like it's like uh, you know, it definitely can make you feel lonely. But my mm -hmm. best way of dealing with that is first of all, you do need to force yourself to talk to people, and I I do that in school too. I just <laughs> go up and talk to new people and to relate to them, like literally force yourself to relate and to change the topic if you have to. Like if if we're talking about something I'm not that interested in, mm -hmm. I'll literally like bring up something else. <laughs> like you might say this is selfish, but I don't care. Like <laughs> come on. Also, mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like even the person I'm talking to doesn't care about the topic they just it's like the socially accepted thing to talk about mm, yeah. and i have i've had such great conversations that way because just like what i've said about emotions we do have different contexts we also go through the same emotions and i also think everyone feels lonely and i know that's such an annoying thing to hear 
when when you literally are different in a way like for example when you know it's like I had a time when I was like okay I'm neurodivergent nobody's nobody else is neurodivergent I'm lonely and all that and when people will tell me like oh everyone feels lonely I'd be like you don't get it you're not neurodivergent I actually am different I actually am lonely you know it was mm-hmm. I would like go the whole fight <laughs> But like, but like, really, everyone does feel lonely a lot. Mm-hmm. And like, people are not like a lot of the times, it's like we have the tendency to think that other people are more confident, or like other people are more charismatic. But at the same time, like, everybody's bad at starting conversations. Mm-hmm. Everybody's yes. kind of bad at approaching people. Of course, some people Yeah, that, you have people that, that have worked on that skill, <laughs> they're not. But like, even just like relating to other people, it's so important, like genuinely, mm-hmm. because uh, it's just like, even if they're not the most high vibrational, if they're not the most like healthy, it's like to see them as one of you, and to see them as another counterpart of this divine being that we're all a part of. It's just so nice. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's just mm-hmm. so damn nice. Yes, it so, is. It's all experience. Yeah. Like, it's all... I mean, it, it is the... Um... That's the idea of the whole system, of course, that that people, like, you know, with the 9 to 5 and all stuff like that, and with, with Corona also very important, it is the whole idea to keep people separate, to keep them feel lonely. Because yeah. because that's that's also one of the lowest vibrations there is. And exactly, so... it's separation. Mm-hmm. Like yes, it's is the because... whole opposite from oneness. Mm-hmm. Like you know, separation is all about me versus the other, and I mm-hmm. totally get it. Like they yes. want us lonely, and there there is a whole loneliness epidemic out there. Like there are so many people talking about it. How social media is making people lonelier than ever. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's actually great that we're talking about it because by talking about it and spreading more awareness, it's going to reach more people and therefore more people are going to make a change. And if people, even if people are talking about it, it still makes us feel more connected. Like just yes. by talking about how we feel lonely, we kind of kill some of the loneliness because we talk that's about true. it. That's true. And like, I think we can do everything together, like anything. Mm-hmm. Yes. And just like how this world is sort of the result of us, like humanity, being a certain way altogether, if we change that, it's also going to be just as powerful. And the results are going to be just as monumental, like really powerful. So, yeah, like humans are powerful. And Mm -hmm. yes, for sure. Yeah, like it's like the same with the system. It's like they want to like they want to make us forget that. Yes. That's but, what, that's why it's important to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, exactly. Like connection, it's so like connection it, it's from it comes from vulnerability. Like you have to be vulnerable in order to connect. I mean, I'm not saying tell everything like <laughs> all that, but like mm-hmm. it, it comes from the same like getting over the fear. Yes. Because fear is what keeps you isolated. And it's like it all ties back into this whole ego versus soul and like fear versus love and like separation versus oneness a lot of the times of course there are a lot of outside impacts that make people feel lonely but a lot of the times loneliness comes from fear fear of being judged mm-hmm. i know yes. like for me even not even if not even of being judged but like fear of being like oh they're not gonna get it like they're mm-hmm. not they're yes. we're different like that was my belief for a very long time that i was different <laughs> yes. and like I, I do think i'm different but like not that much you I know, know? <laughs> i had to believe also I always was like yeah because i have the same thing as you yeah, because I'm I'm different. You <laughs> you don't understand uh, how I feel, stuff like that. But eventually, you come to realize that um, more people have the same problem, even though you don't realize it. Yeah. Or maybe maybe not maybe not in the same area. It could be in a in a totally different area. But everybody yeah. has their own problems that are as impactful as the ones that you have. In yeah, in yeah. in a way, everybody is the same. Like, you're not different from anybody else. Yeah. Oh, this, this is so beautiful. Like, this is this is making me feel <laughs> so good, just, like, talking about this. So, like, saying, like, when you said that, like, how we kind of are all the same and, like, I mean, not in a bad way, like, saying, like, <laughs> oh, you're wrong. 
all the same. That sounds that sounds that kind of sounds like an insult. <laughs> no, I didn't but say like, it like that. But no, it's like when you said it, it was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. it, it's just it's just the truth, you know. That's that's yeah. all of this. I'm just again, I'm just saying things as it is. Like I even like. I want to go back to the technology part because I okay, never, okay. I never really was much. I mean, I had a phone since I was uh, how old was I? Maybe 13, 13 years old. I think I got my first phone, or maybe eleven, around around eleven, something like that. I got my first phone. I really never was on my phone. You know, okay, if you were, um, how do you say, if it's really, really, really a boring moment. Then I would play a game on my phone, okay. But otherwise, I really never have been on my phone because because I I always um, as a kid I always hated um, the idea of social media of my identity being out there. I really like wow. like the the face the face ID and the fingerprints that the government has to have. And I I hate it. <laughs> you like I I know hate that. it. <laughs> You've known that all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I, I stayed away from social media as much as I could. But then, wow. but then eventually, how long ago? Like by now, maybe seven or eight years ago. No, six, six or seven years ago, when I started uploading to social media, I, I got social media just to share the knowledge that I had. Yeah. So now I am on social media, but I'm not really on social media. <laughs> if you understand, like yeah. you won't, you won't yeah, see me posting on videos. This, you're on the good side um, of social yeah. media. You won't see me posting videos like, oh, we are at the restaurant man right now. We are eating <laughs> this. Oh, so delicious. My life's so great. <laughs> no, oh, you, I, you, you will that. never see Not that. always though. Sometimes, sometimes when it's true and it's really like a cute moment, I'm yes, like, oh, this yes, is so cute. Course, but sometimes course, yeah. there are people who I know in real life <laughs> that are depressed or in an unhealthy relationship. Their life is nothing like what they post, and I'm not saying that to bring them down. <laughs> it's just like I see, like I don't go, I don't really go on social media. I listen to YouTube, like I. I uh, listen to podcasts on YouTube, but other than that, I don't really go on social media. Mm -hmm. And like, oh my god, like so many times I just see a post and I'm like, that's not real. Like your relationship, I see you like <laughs> do have all this beef with your like significant other. And like, then you're like, oh, he's perfect. Or like, she's perfect. <laughs> yes, I'm like, I nah. Hate it. I hate it it's also. like, y'all broke up six times. Mm -hmm. Like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not calling. I don't, I don't want to say anything specific because you know, I'm. I don't want to like bring anything yeah, no, down. No, I, I understand. I understand. You yeah, don't like want I. To... Yes, exactly. Like I have flaws too, and all that. Like I've been fake a lot. Like when I was younger, <laughs> I was really fake. Like I mean, not not really. Like I, I always had a tendency to be honest, but like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, compared to how more, like, how honest I am now, okay, I'm not saying, like, <laughs> like, I, I don't want to, like, flex. I don't want to sound like I'm, like, oh, I'm, I'm so honest, y'all, like, seriously. <laughs> but no, For me, it's the same thing, though. It's, like, I was, I, I used to be fake as hell, and I, I do the same thing. I post my fake shit on social media. Sorry to swear, though. Don't <laughs> no know if problem. It's okay no, if it I, don't, I don't care. Okay. I used to be one of those fake people, and, like, a lot of them are nice. Like, I'm not saying they're bad. Like, mm -hmm. like it's, it's not about that they're bad people at all. Oh, it's just the whole pressure of social media it's unhealthy yes it is. and also the distraction like it's addictive mm -hmm. it keeps it you is. on it for like hours and yes. i had that too when i would scroll on tiktok i would instagram shorts oh my god <laughs> no. those are funny though like not yes. all of them but some, <laughs> some of the things i saw no i'm gonna be honest so funny. I... <laughs> Sometimes I do get caught in in social media, okay, but that's, that's really that's just yeah. I mean, yeah, it is normal because yeah, yeah I mean, there's it's nothing like... much to say. Just I get yeah. sometimes I get caught in it, but that's really just for for like an hour or something like that, and then I'm like, okay, <laughs> I've gone again. Damn. And I'm also you're you're doing well. Yeah, no, I've always, as I said, I've always, always since the very beginning, I've hated the idea of my um identity being online i i always hate it like you 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 will never see me okay <laughs> right now you will never see me posting a real picture of myself online um because i i just i don't 
like that. I don't know. I just don't don't trust. I don't trust the the um the corporations. I don't trust I the it. government stuff like that. You know, I just <laughs> don't want them to have my it. information. Also, with um yeah. on my personal like my personal um uh my how do you say? personal socials um I always life. Just personal yeah, life. no, no, not life, life, but just my my personal information. <laughs> no, my personal social account. Okay, so I, I have the public, the, oh, pub, the, oh. the public accounts, but my my personal one, like when I'm at school, okay, people from my class and, and friends and stuff like that, I I add them as a friend, but then the moment they are gone, I also remove them. You know, if if you yeah, understand, I like I, I have no friends at all in my all my personal accounts. I only have family. That's it. Like even even. Yeah, I I get it. I mean. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've always always been that way. Never liked social media that much. I've always been in in nature. I mean, some of it, it's like it's not normal. Yeah, because it's like people can track back things you have said that you might have like they take it out of context, mm -hmm. like context. Me. That's what that kind of was what I was uncomfortable with when I was doing YouTube. And mm -hmm. I do feel like I want to put my face out there and I want to really like put like my even like some private things out there, but I'm not saying private like involving people. Like I'm never gonna say names, mm -hmm. I'm never gonna yes, of course. be like specific about anyone because I wanna respect people's privacy. But I do wanna put myself on the internet. It's just I completely understand that it is scary because so many people can like track you down or like not even even if they don't track you down just like take things that you said out of context and just like try to cancel you and like try to drag you down and to be like mm -hmm. like oh she said that oh my <laughs> god that was racist when i literally just said like literally yes. nothing <laughs> having know. to do with racism like so many too. times like for example I love Native American culture. I've ever since I was a little kid, I loved mm -hmm. them. And I used to dress up as like a Native American when I was <laughs> yes, a little kid. Too. And too. I saw this post on Instagram. It's like, culture is not a costume. And I was like, oh no. I'm like, I was like eight years old. So I, of course, maybe because of all that stuff, I wouldn't do it now. But like, I love, like, okay, I know that cultural appropriation can be offensive mm -hmm. in some ways. But like nowadays, all this cancel culture and everything being more offensive, <laughs> it just breeds more fear. Like mm -hmm. people are just more afraid to be honest. Yeah. Because it's true. like you're not even like if if you just express your honest opinion, some people on the internet, on <clears throat> Twitter, but no, I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> There's no longer Twitter. It's like though, they're I'm just saying. yeah. I'm not on Twitter. I just hear the worst about it. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the most. I've, yeah, that's it's proven. It's proven to be the most toxic um, social platform. TikTok. At least I'm like okay, it's addictive, but a, <laughs> a lot of people are very being very honest there. Mm -hmm. So I do encourage that. Like I do encourage just like being honest about literally just being honest. Like I feel like TikTok is the like from what I've seen, it's like TikTok is the realest one. Like of social media or YouTube, but not not really. It's like every social media platform has its sides, and like there are people that are being really fake there, and there are people that are being more honest and genuine, and like. But there are a lot of people that are being very brave on social media, and I appreciate that a lot, and I I really respect that when people are just being very real on social media and being very brave about things because it's really like it's scary. Like everybody's doing the same stuff and then you're there, you want to do something different. And it's, it's like, it's, it's scary because we've been told that you're only accepted if you're the same as other people. And that's so not true. That's the biggest lie ever. Because just think about it completely logically. Let's say you get stranded on a an island, maybe plane crash, I don't know. And like, there's a group of people that survive. Let's say everybody is really good at fishing and they can only do fishing. Now, if everybody's really good at fishing, who's making the clothes? Who's doing the other necessary things? Like humans evolved with be through being different because you are naturally meant to bring something to a community that's not already there. So you can give them something that they don't already have. You don't need something you already have. That's also something that we have been programmed to think is that connection can only be made through being the same and like not being different and not standing out. But like, 
that's also something with loneliness. I feel like people feel lonely because they believe that they can't connect and therefore they can't be loved if they're different. And like, it's just not true. It's literally not true, but so many people believe it. So a lot of people think it's true, but I think it's quite the opposite. Like, I love it when my friend disagrees with me, literally, because it just, it's a sign of trust and trust is a sign of closeness to me. Like to me, somebody can know everything about me, but if I don't trust them, we're not close. So <laughs> it's just like, that's another little perspective I have about loneliness and how like they brainwash us to be lonely when literally we are meant to be different. We don't have to be lonely because we're different. We don't have to be an outcast just because we're different. In fact, the community thrives off of having unique people in it. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's kind of what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. It is so true, yeah. Whilst, whilst you were talking, I was, uh, I thought about, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the, of the cancel culture. <laughs> I was I was searching for a, a post I made uh, a few years ago on my Facebook with just my um, my dog chewing on some wood and then the other oh. little, the, yeah, the other little dog comes to it and, and, he, and he joins chewing it and eventually it gets its own its own little stick to chew on, and then there was this, this, this. I think it was a woman because the the comments were removed. I don't know if I removed them or not. <laughs> that it was a woman saying that 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 I was doing animal abuse and that she would report me for animal abuse. <laughs> no like way! <laughs> and I'm like, but this is how is this animal abuse? <laughs> what the hell? That makes no sense. Mm. Bruh. So, yeah. I mean, animal abuse comments have become a meme now because of how stupid they can be. <laughs> like, there's a random video of an animal and there are people parodying that. Like, oh, this is animal abuse. If you do that, the dog will catapult into space and make the uh, make the solar system explode. And it's, like, so funny. But, I mean, sometimes, before, sometimes people do post animal abuse, though. That's so... Yes, like, yes. One of my classmates I've seen this. posted a video of decapitating a chicken. And I was like... I'm I like, really can't oh understand God, that, how people do that. That upset me so much. <laughs> But he I mean, did not... it himself, or it just re-uploaded? No, nah, he did, he did yeah, it himself. See. I was like, what uh... the hell? But, I mean, it's still, like, at least... Okay, I'm... This is a perspective that my some someone I know, so... <laughs> it's just still something, something I gotta get used to, like, not saying names. But the point is, I heard a perspective from a friend of mine who said that at least they're being, like, they're showing what's happening. Because so many people, they eat meat. And it's just given to us in a nice little package. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's yeah. all nice. It has all the smiling little pigs on the <laughs> package and all that. And like, you don't see the cruelty behind it. Yes, for sure. And actually, that video made me go vegetarian, by the way. That my, <laughs> uh, one of my friends posted, you know, the chicken one. Oh, wow. So, so it was like, actually, I was like, maybe... Okay, of course, it was really disturbing, but maybe everything happens for the best, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying animals get hurt for the best, but mm. maybe people sharing that happens for the best so it can stop. Like, yeah. I mean, it's like I live in, you know, I, I live in Hungary and there's still a big culture in, on the countryside of, like, raising your own animals and then killing them yourself. And, like, that's still... Of course, that's still cruelty, but it's nothing compared to the factory farms and compared to like, it, like, oh my God, like mm -hmm. what's going on in factories? It's yes. like, I've seen those oh, videos. One time, it's just horrible. Oh my God, bro. Those videos, I have not seen like, I purposely don't watch them, but like <laughs> yeah. one time I was falling asleep and I oh, couldn't no. sleep because of what I imagined they were okay. doing. Like, it's, oh my God. And like, so the point is like, I don't know what the point is anymore, bro. <laughs> What's the point? What's the point of being alive? Experience. Yes. Literally. It's all, yeah, it's all um, the source trying to discover who it is itself. Like, we are all part of the source. And so this all just a, yeah, like an experience for the source to eventually understand who yeah. it is. Like, eventually we will all return to the source and become become the source again basically i don't understand that but 
I like it. <laughs> how do we? How do we not understand? You know, I'm making a video series it's on like, it, but so I could it's send it. It's crazy. To you. I mean, no, no, I can. I understand, but like the concept, like the, it's like I can't fully comprehend it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I can. It's like I know, but it's like you know when you understand something, you also sort of <laughs> feel it or like yes, yes, you know. It's like I don't really feel it through. It's just like yeah, that's how things are. But like to actually really comprehend it in my mind, I'm like, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm, I don't yeah. know. I'm it's always, bit... I'm always like confused, like with the idea that <laughs> you that um that there are parallel universes okay and so and so you have one one actual consciousness that's right in this universe right now but so this is this is your own reality okay so the people around you are real but they're not really real like i, I found that aspect always <laughs> so crazy oh my that god if, if you I if know, you understand what i'm like trying the... to say also like the quantum shifting mm -hmm. or like quantum jumping yes. like there's a theory that with every little second like every little moment you're literally in a different timeline or like on a different mm -hmm. you in For a sure. different universe and you're literally con constantly shifting timelines and like i don't know it's just like i don't really think about it that much because i'm like i'm just like i i've kind of made peace with not knowing and like not understanding it because i'm like even if i did understand it what does it change like i mm -hmm. i do yes it's, it is very interesting though but for me it's just like i feel like what's more useful to me is just to make peace with not understanding it and maybe one day i'm gonna be drawn to it and my soul's my soul's mission is going to be to understand it but i feel mm -hmm. like it's not now yeah for I've, me of course i have a little bit of the same mindset as that like not not with um not understanding but for me it's like um with how um you know all the plans of the elites and like the wars going on and stuff like that and like you know the crisis yeah, that, yeah. that they're, they're planning this this huge crisis and stuff like that and with things like these, I am just like, what happens, happens. Okay, like, I don't, yeah. I don't, this thing, like, I'm not scared. I'm not scared for it, okay? I know it's going to come, okay? It's going to be horrible, yes. But what are you going to do about it, right? You can, the only thing yeah. you can do is just accept it. And that's, that's basically my mindsets on those things. Yeah. Yeah, also, like, acceptance is, is kind of the key, like, for what i know about zen buddhism and like taoism and like the wu wei philosophy mm -hmm. it's all about acceptance and like how yes. happiness is acceptance and like it is yes it's really interesting i'm I'm not gonna like completely breach it because i <laughs> haven't really gone through it myself because i'm just discovering it so i don't i'm not really you know it's like i don't know that much about it yet but i find it really intriguing but also i feel like acceptance is it goes both ways because you also need to accept your like your desires though like your needs like your desires you might desire something because your soul wants to experience the process of getting there so it might be divine that you want something so it's mm -hmm. like to desire is like you know how they say it's like how to desire is to hurt or like pain comes from desire but at the same time mm -hmm. if you desire not to desire that in itself is a desire so <laughs> the way i look at it is like accept what i feel like my heart wants and not my fear wants and accept like what i want that i feel like i don't want just to be safe or just to get the wrong attention quote unquote like for me the wrong attention it feels like attention for things that are not really authentic like you know attention and validation for things that are not really you it's like i feel like a lot of people that are famous it's like they put on this image and they do get the attention but it's not really who they are i feel like that's a very good example <laughs> is youtubers who make a lot of these crazy thumbnails and this oh my god calling santa claus at 3 a.m and like they it's like they, yeah. they do get attention but come on like is it is that really you like is that really what you care about or like you know what i mean so any goal that i have that i feel like is really authentic to accept that 
I feel like that's the true way to not desire is to accept your desires. I don't know. I'm not mm -hmm. a philosopher. Yes, no, I understand what you're but saying. But maybe I you're am. Right. <laughs> maybe you it are. It sounds. It is not. It, it's low key not making sense. But it also, if you get it, you get it though. Mm -hmm, for sure. The girls that get it get it. Um, by the way, we're yeah. kind of uh, going a bit away with the time. We've been an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry for Also, I just, up. I like my sleep. Like... <laughs> 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 Me too. So, uh, also, uh, maybe, okay, if we end it here. That's okay. Then, okay, that's that's great. So, thank you very much. Thank you. No, thank you. It was really interesting. Thank you, thank you. I mm. mean, I hope I didn't go on too long tangents or like... Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, it's okay. interesting to listen for, so it's, it's really thanks, okay thanks. because it's really interesting. Thank mm. you, thank you. I mean, this is also a great thing for you to do, like, to just talk with people and, yes. like, I really... <laughs> That's, that's why I love podcasts. Podcast is like my thing.